Hi, I'm Brett, and in this video, I thought we'd go on a chanterelle mushroom hunt. So uh, we're here on the northern coast of Puerto Rico. I live about 20 minutes away from here, and it's November, so the temperature has dropped just slightly, which is a trigger to mushrooms to come up. And we're in a forest here, which is holding a lot of humidity. Plus, we still get a little bit of rain this time of year. Um, the ocean is about 200 feet that way, and I never expected to find edible mushrooms uh, here, but I probably should have. There's a lot of humidity here. Um, then I met a friend who is a mycologist on the island, and he told me that chanterelle actually grow here. So that's one of my favorite mushrooms. And I don't know if it's luck or good planning, but in any case, I only walked about 10 feet from my car and they are everywhere. Let me take you in the forest here and show you. So the ones that we find in North America are generally yellow in color but these are a vibrant orange and you can see how they really stand out against the forest floor. Uh, let me take the camera in closer and you can see these. So I think I might be the only person that hunts mushrooms on the island. <laughs> I don't see anyone else doing it, but uh, there are more than I could ever pick here. There's hundreds of pounds, it could it would take days. And unfortunately, I have to leave town uh, in a couple of days. We're going to Italy, so that'll be fun. Uh, what that means is I'll pick some of these and cook them up here at home. I'll show you that in a second. Um, but if you ever come across a patch like this and there's more than you know what to do with, I suggest pickling them rather than freezing them. Freezing mushrooms, they tend to be a little bit slimy, whereas pickled, they hold up their texture and they're good for years. Um, Otherwise, any restaurant would be happy to have these. You could probably sell these to a restaurant for about $25 a pound. And uh, one last thing I want to point out, when you go mushroom hunting, it's a good idea to use a mesh bag. That way, the spores from the mushrooms can drop out on the ground as you're walking and spread that seed so that next year there's an even bigger harvest. And uh, so anyhow, I'm going to pick these now and uh, then I'll show you how we cook them. All right. So after about 10 minutes, I picked these. It's probably about two to three pounds worth. And uh, I'm just blown away by how many mushrooms are here. This path goes for miles and miles. And it, the mushrooms are covering the entire forest floor here. There's more than you could pick with a, with a team um, of people. So kind of a shame to leave them here, but it's nice to know they'll be here next season. So let's go home and try cooking these up. All right, so I've washed and cleaned all these chanterelle, removed all the debris and sand. And um, I know some people say you shouldn't wash mushrooms, but I thought it's better to have a clean mushroom than a sandy one. Um, really, the reason you don't wash mushrooms is because they only last a couple of days afterward. But in this case, I'm going to cook them or jar them, and I'm not really too concerned uh, about the perishability. So I'm starting them here in a dry pan. And uh, that's important because we really want to remove as much moisture as we can in the beginning of the cooking process. And that's going to uh, give them a better texture. Then over here, I'm starting a brine. That's going to be for jarring these because there's more than I can eat here. So the brine is simple. I just used white vinegar, some bay leaves. Um, I had this salt mixture I made. It's Malden sea salt mixed with thyme. And uh, let's see, what else I put in there? Some garlic, um, a little bit of olive oil. And once this comes to a boil, we're going to blanch our mushrooms and then jar them. You can see how much moisture these have given up. Um, and then again, I added nothing to these. So I want to get rid of that liquid. Really, you can use it for something like risotto or cooking a pasta in there, or you could make a mushroom sauce out of that. Um, I'm going to add it to my brine that I'll be brining the other mushrooms in. So now we've poured off all of our extra water. Mushrooms still have nothing on them at this point, but this is when I'm going to add some butter. And then we'll use a little bit of my uh, sea salt and thyme. And then you can also add the garlic now. Great, now these sauteed ones are finished. I'm gonna go ahead and just put them over here. Do 
turn that one off. I'm going to move over now to the brined mushrooms. Um, so we've got our brine boiling here. We want it to be really hot and uh, so it doesn't cool down too much when we drop our mushrooms in. Okay, that's enough. We really want it to return to a boil as fast as possible. Our mushrooms have come to a boil here in the brine, so it's, gonna, it's time to remove those and put them right into this jar. I have already cleaned this jar and sterilized it. All right, so last, now that I've filled up the jars with as many mushrooms as I can fit in there, I'm going to top this off with our brine. Yeah, really, when you, you want the brine all the way up to cover all the mushrooms, 